Hey guys, welcome back. Just one more video on moments and how to find the moment of a force about a point on an object. So in this case, we have this sort of bracket or shelf or something that's attached to a wall. We're applying a force over here and we wanna figure out what is the moment that that force is creating about point A. So there's two ways that we can do that. We can, we can use the perpendicular distance from the point to the line of action of the force and then multiply it by the magnitude of the force or we can use the vector cross product. So uh, we'll do both examples in this video, but I guess we'll start with the perpendicular distance method first. So first of all, we have the moment about point A. Uh, what we have to do is we have to define a positive sense for the moment. So basically, if we have a moment that's uh, tending to want to create a counterclockwise rotation about this point A, then that would be a positive moment. Otherwise, it would be a negative moment. Uh, and so then all we have to do is we have our perpendicular distance times the magnitude of the force. All right. Um, now, if we wanted to find the perpendicular distance, what we need to do is first we have the line of action of the force, which would fall on this sort of pink line here. Uh, and then the perpendicular distance from the point to that line of action would be this red line. So all we would need to know is the length of this red line and we multiply it by 500 Newtons and then we would get our answer, in, which is the moment in Newton meters. But it's actually kind of hard to find the length of this line. Um, and so I think the easier way to do it is to not worry about that. We'll break this vector or we'll break this force into its vector components and then we'll solve, uh, we'll add them up to get the to get the equivalent answer. All right, so to do that, basically what we're doing is instead of just finding the perpendicular distance to the line of action of the force, we're finding the perpendicular distance from the point to the line of action of the forces of the x and y components and then multiplying those, uh, those magnitudes throughout. So we would have the perpendicular distance from the point to the line of action of the x component of the force uh, times the magnitude of the x component of the force, and then we would do the same thing uh, with the y component of the force. So what we should do is we should draw on our our components here. So we would have fx, and then we would have down here uh, fy would look something like that. All right, so let's just uh, remember draw our coordinate axis over here just so we don't get lost. And then we know that fx is just going to be equal to 500 times cos 30. Uh, and that actually works out to 433 newtons. And then Fy down here is 500 sine 30. And that actually works out to 250 newtons. 250 newtons. Those are the magnitudes. The directions would be like that and like that. Okay, so then uh, we can just plug that information basically into this formula and we'll get the perpendicular distance to the line of action of the x component of the force, well, the x component of the force line of action is right here, this horizontal line. So the perpendicular distance from that point A to the line of action of the force is 2 meters. So we get 2 meters times the magnitude of the x component of the force, which is 433 newtons. Now what we have to do is we have to consider if this will be causing a positive or a negative moment. So if we imagine that this sort of bracket or L-shaped object here can rotate, could rotate about point A, well, if we just apply, if we just apply this Fx, it would want to kind of give it the tendency to rotate this way about point A if point A could rotate. So we say that that has a negative moment because that's opposite the positive sense that we've defined up here. So what we have to do is we have to give that a negative sign. Uh, now for Fy, uh, same thing, this x, this y component of the force, if the object could rotate about point A, if we just applied Fy, it would kind of make the object want to rotate this way, or spin this way around point A. So again, we're seeing a negative moment because of the y component of the force. Okay, so knowing that, the distance, the perpendicular distance from point A to the line of action of the force, which is this vertical line here, is 6 meters. 6 meters. And the magnitude of the y component of the force is 250 newtons. All right, uh, now if we just add these all together or simplify this, we actually get negative 866, and this becomes minus 1500. Uh, and that all works out to be, uh, we can write it down here. Um, that was actually newton meters, and so we end up with a, a final answer here of negative 2,366 newton meters. And it's negative, again, because it's creating this, uh, if it was able to rotate about point A, it would be creating this sort of clockwise rotation about A. So the other thing we could say if we wanted to, 
uh, we could drop the negative sign and we could just say that it's 2,366 Newton meters in the clockwise direction or the clockwise sense. All right, so that's, uh, that's how we use the perpendicular distance and the magnitude of the force. Now let's use the vector cross product. So the other thing we can do is we can write it like this. Uh, the moment about point A, we will define the same sense to be positive. And then we just say we have it's R cross F. Now R is our position vector from the point to anywhere on the line of action of the force. So it could be here, it could be here, it could be here. It doesn't matter as long as it's on the line of action of the force. But what we want to do is we'll put, pick this point because we actually know the coordinates of that point. So that's going to help us out a little bit, make our lives a little bit easier. So there we go, we have R. Okay, uh, so when we want to do this, R cross F, I guess we'll have uh, the X component of R is 6 meters, the Y component of R is 2 meters, and the Z component of R is 0 because this vector is in the XY plane. There's no Z component. And then for our our, for our vector form of our force, the x component of that is 433. The y component is negative 250. Uh, we didn't include the negative sign before because we we're strictly talking magnitudes, but here it's really important for the sort of orientation of it. And then z, again, this is in the xy plane, so we have zero component in the z direction. All right, so now we can go ahead and cross these like we've been doing in previous videos. So for the first component, the or for the yeah for the x component, uh, it would be two times zero minus zero times negative two fifty. So two times zero minus zero times negative two fifty. Just like that, yeah. I can make a zero. Uh, for the last component, it would be the same method, but just switched. So six times negative two fifty. Uh, six times negative two fifty minus two times four hundred and thirty three. 2 times 433. And the middle component, we do it the reverse direction. So we start at the bottom here. It goes 0 times 433 uh, minus 6 times 0. Minus 6 times 0. All right. So when we go and simplify this, we have 2 times 0 minus 0 times 250. So that becomes 0. We have 0 times something minus something times 0. So the y component becomes 0. And down here we have 6 times negative 250. Well, that's actually negative 1500 minus 2 times 433, so that's 866. And we can see that this would actually reduce to 0, 0, negative 2366. All right, so now this is actually looking suspiciously similar to what we have up here. Uh, what we can do is we can just go one step further, or a few steps further, I guess, and we'll just pull out this because of scalar multiplication, we can do that. So we'll have negative 2,366 times 0, 0, 1. And this 0, 0, 1 vector is actually our unit vector we call k hat because it has a length of 1 uh, and a direction of, uh, and it's in the positive k direction, which is the positive z direction. So we can also write this as negative 2,366 k hat. And if you recall, this whole time, our units of R was meters and our units of F was newtons. So this is actually newton meters, just like that. Um, now this is actually the answer. This is the complete answer. And this is equivalent to saying all of any of these. So negative 2,366 k hat is equal to basically, or is equivalent to this clockwise rotation in the xy plane uh, for describing our moment. And the reason why that is, is because if you remember from the, the cross product video we did, we have our first vector, so this will be r, and then we're crossing it with f, which looked something like that. What you do is you take your right hand and you point it in the line, you point it to the, the tip of the first arrow, so you point it to the direction that r is pointing in, and then you sweep with your palm towards the next vector. So when you sweep down, your fingers will start pointing towards F as you sweep. And when you do that, you'll notice your thumb is actually pointing into the screen. And that is the direction sort of that we say the moment has, or that's the direction that the cross product is basically going in. Um, and so <clears throat> that's just the equivalent thing of, you know, we can, we can talk about uh, a 
we can talk about a moment having a sort of a sense, like a rotational sense, but also because of the definition of the cross product, when you do rotate with your hand like that, the way that your the way that your thumb points in is also another way to describe that rotation. So sometimes you'll be, you know, especially when you're working with moments in 3D instead of 2D, this starts to become really important um, about sort of which what the components are. But um, basically, what this is just saying is that, you know, if we had uh, if this was actually a positive value, well, then it would be going in the positive z direction and it would be coming out of the page, but that's not how we draw our axes. Well, that is how we draw your axes, but if we have a negative value, it just basically flips the direction. So that's what you're seeing here. All right, well, I hope that video was helpful and I will see you in the next one.